as well. Um, and Jesse was, uh, yeah, our, our only choice. Uh, he was the only person we met, and yeah, we had no backup plan. We were just going to wait until he had a, you know, a dip, which you know <laughs> was the hope, just a moral dip and just a, a dip of courage, and and would do this. That, that was it, really. Yeah. Do you see a moment of weakness that made you decide to do it? Yeah, like a four-month moment of weakness. Yeah. Um, uh, right, no, from... I was on the receiving end of that story, so um, he... Uh, yeah, I met with Richard in New York. They sent me um, his movie because the script hadn't been finalized yet for the double, so I watched Submarine, and I just thought it was not only the most amazing movie, but the thing that stuck out for me the most was um, how you could tell how the actors were treated on set just by watching the movie because every character in that is treated with such integrity um, regardless of the size of the role uh, every actor seemed to have like a unique presence and I just thought whatever this person is doing with actors is really special and um, when I was on set that was the experience every actor said that you know, Richard's the only director they would do one line in a movie for. Uh, there were a lot of people with kind of small parts who were normally playing larger roles, and it was every, everybody just knew that they would have a very special experience working with him. Right there. Uh, hi, first of all, I, I love the movie. It was awesome. Uh, second, there's something that's very clear. Are you twins? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> that is so ironic. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so this is a very clear um, world of the film. Because obviously, I, I mean, I've never read the novella, but there seems to be a very specific kind of vision for the film. I'm just wondering, what is it like as a director, and even for Jesse as an actor, to kind of bring this very unique vision to life? It's okay. Um, it's, uh, well, it, it was um, the novel... Sorry. It was so loud, I thought you'd heard. Um, <laughs> it was not in a bad way, as in your just diction was excellent. Um, I th it was it's just about... I'll, you'll catch on, I'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so it's really, you know, it's not that kind of thing. So, um, essentially, the novel is quite specific to a kind of... I mean, in the middle, honestly. If, you, if, if at the end you have no idea, then... <laughs> you'll be on the same page as this man. <laughs> so, um, he was running. When was the last time this man ran like that? Oh, right. This is how badly it's going. Now, who stands for one question? I'm going to see one question and see how badly they fuck it up, and then I'm going to go to And I think we all know how this is going to go. So I'm going to go. I need to get a taco. So, the, the Dostoevsky novel is quite satirical of a certain type of time and a, a level of bureaucracy that, you know, we didn't particularly think was relevant in a 1846, you know, various tier system of Russian bureaucracy just wasn't in this year. And so <laughs> we, we, it just didn't feel appropriate and it felt more interesting, the idea of almost the world looking like how people thought the future might be in the 50s. So if, if you see a program in the 1950s of what they thought the future would be, it's always completely off, and everything is over-designed, and it, you have massive computers that do one thing, um, whereas everyone wants small computers that do lots of things. Everything's kind of wrong. It's like when people built those... Um, you know, villages or cities of the future, like there's this town in England, Milton Keynes, and, you know, people still live there and it's fine, but they got it kind of wrong. And the, they thought everyone's going to live in the same place and work in the same place and everyone's going to congregate and it has this slightly lonely, brutalist functional feel and, you know, I'm from the tourist board there. And, uh, so, it, but, so the idea was really to have that... Uh, feel to it. A little bit, again, let me insult another town to be equal. Um, so, like, Atlanta seems to have been very built up for the Olympics, and then everyone went, oh, we don't need this anymore, what are we going to do with it? And then when I went there, they said that they were selling apartments, and you got another apartment free. Yeah. At the same, as if, like, how could that be part of your plan? <laughs> move, but, um, maybe I can put my truck in the other one? I don't know what they were doing. So, 
it was really to have that and also for it to feel more dreamy um, and more like, you know, Edward Hopper paintings. Like in Edward Hopper paintings, David Crank, the designer, pointed this out to me, which I've never noticed. You never see the wires in between the telegraph poles. And if you just, you don't notice it, it seems completely right and you only see the information that is necessary. And so that's what we, yeah, we're trying to do. And, and what do you think the question was? <laughs> yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Okay. This one we might have to repeat. <laughs> You do the redaction. The, the question was, how is it adapting uh, a modernist source to a post-postmodernist world? I think she said two. Yes. Um, and and also, how was creating a character who's so disconnected from technology for an audience that's so plugged into technology? Well, I suppose partially by it not being now, and so the world isn't in the film particularly postmodern. I mean, in terms of how people watch it, that's difficult to know, but it feels that really since um, maybe the apartment, the idea of anyone taking their job seriously is so absurd. Mm -hmm. In a film, you know if someone uh, works in an office in a film that the, they won't enjoy that job and that the idea is that there'll be some other repository for their dreams and this is the thing in the way. And so it felt that we had to make something where someone could ostensibly be interested in their job and Simon, there, there used to be this thing in the script where Simon kept saying, I really think computers are going to change things, um, which we never ended up having, but we like the idea that he, he's really for technology. He thinks it's going to really help and thinks that these computers are going to be great, but they're obviously not. Um, so, I don't know, it, it didn't feel that, from reading the novella, that the basic feeling of it felt out of step with how we felt about things, or it felt that fundamentally the idea of uh, someone who's so invisible and lonely that someone else could show up who looks exactly like them and no one would notice just seemed funny to us and interesting. Mm -hmm. Back there. I sense that there was a lot of um, psychology behind uh, the story. I was wondering, was that something that was drawn from the source material entirely or did you uh, plan that out when you were creating uh, Especially stuff with like the mother and The question was um, that he sensed that there was a lot of psychology behind the story and whether that was something that came from the source material or whether you planned it out during research for the film. Well, in the book, th that certainly exists. I mean, it, perhaps not in the same way that there's not really a mother figure in the book. There isn't the relationship with the Hannah character, but it does feel like a very... It's interesting because the book's third person but feels subjective. Um, whereas this was all told in a way through Simon's eyes. And yeah, I guess probably a lot of those ideas in Dostoevsky probably prefigured Jung and the idea of the shadow and those things that came up. But he was dealing with them in story terms rather than in analysis as much. But, you know, Jung was very interested in archetypes and stories and myths and those things, and so they end up overlapping very strongly. This person hates Jung so much. He can't <laughs> <laughs> so, no, sorry. I'm a strict Freudian. I will see you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, man downers, all of that stuff, the unconscious. Oh, give me a break. So, um, yeah, so there... But... Yeah, I, I know very little. And that's one of the things I know this. This is another thing I know very little about. Yeah. 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 Yeah.